Okay, long story short, a viewer, Houston Firefox, generously donated me some solar panels. You should totally check out his YouTube channel. In addition to him owning some property a few miles north of mine, he recently also bought the 40 acres I was selling. So we'll be neighbors. Maybe we can work some projects together. It's funny, we still haven't actually met. He drove out here a couple months ago. And of course, I was living in my truck and working in El Paso. And by the time I got a day off, he had to go back home again. So he left the panels in town. And then I picked them up a few days later. Since I was living in the truck at the time, I didn't really need to set them up, so they've been sitting here in the shop. It's kind of at an awkward stage because these aren't compatible with my current Harbor Freight panels. Obviously, they are much better, but since there are only four of them, just replacing one set of panels with the other wouldn't really make things better. And I already have the other ones working. I shot this in February, so by March now in 2020, I'm closer to actually using them, so let me try to catch you up here. The panels have wires attached, and they have these nice connectors on them. They are designed for a higher powered charge controller than I have. These would normally be wired in series, so plus to minus, plus to minus, and then daisy chained together. They put out close to 100 volts each, so you could wire them in a series of four for 400 volts. I can't connect these new panels to the old panels, so I ordered a new charge controller. That charge controller can go up to 100 volts. So rather than wiring in series, I'll wire them in parallel like the old panels. That will give me 100 volts DC, but more amps. It's sad, I'll end up cutting the nice ends off the panels, but I wasn't able to find matching ends. Most new panels use an MC4 connector, but this is something different. At least I can save the cutoff ends and maybe use them somewhere else. Anyway, I did briefly test one of them hooked up to my charge controller and that worked, but I couldn't hook up more than one at a time. This is why I had to move the other panels to make room for the new ones. I'll probably do a follow-up video when I'm all set up and running with the new panels. I'm considering the options. I've heard you can run two charge controllers into one set of batteries. I kind of do that now. When I have a cloudy day, I can run the generator to power a battery charger that is also charging the batteries while the solar is also charging. And that seems to work okay. As I grow the system, maybe I'll split the systems, put the old solar panels with the greenhouse or something. Okay, it was incredibly windy on this day, so uh, I don't think I did any audio at all on here. It's just howling. Here, take a listen. Yeah, enough of that, right? Okay, so what I'm doing here, a viewer, subscriber, donated me some of his panels that he wasn't using anymore. So that's always one of those things where it's like, oh, great, I've got new panels. Uh, I got to redo everything again. So it's, but thank you. <laughs> really, never turned down free solar panels, right? So what I'm doing here, I was like, okay, I got to move the panels. I got to make new racks. Um, but I didn't want to have to take everything completely apart because they're all wired together. So I, I realized that if I was really careful and I had the, the panels propped up on jack stands on the bottom and then put my hand cart underneath them, when I took the bolts out, I could just lower it down onto the hand cart carefully, not to break everything, and then I just roll them over to the new position. Except everything is really tight and I got the panels spaced uh, in the depth you know, direction as tight as I could get them. And about now I realize, oh, huh, <laughs> is this going to work? It was close. But a 13 point turn later, I actually got them through there. So yay for that. The next problem is what I'm going to see here in about, about three seconds is I made the, the panel, or there's a kind of a rack on the ground there in the front, in the foreground. I made that so that I would get the new set of um, legs put in the right position. I was very careful about making a, a nice template to use. Well, I forgot, there's two lengths of common two by fours. There's some that are eight feet long and there's some that are 92 and 5 eighths inches long. The idea is you take the 92 inch ones and you put a top plate and a bottom plate on that and that equals eight feet. I got that wrong. So when I did that, um, I was a few inches too far. Yeah, that sucked. Anyway, so what I'm doing now, 
Since I had disconnected the panels to move them, I wanted to get power out of that. This was on a cloudy, windy day, so I thought, well, let me hook up a temporary wire to the panels laying on the ground. They'll put out a little bit of power. So here I'm just making a new set of wires that I can connect to the old set. And all these panels are wired in parallel. So it's, what, 16 panels altogether. They all put out roughly 18 volts on a sunny day. So I've got 18 volts all the way across in parallel, and then that just adds up for more amps of charging. So strip the wires, twist them, uh, put the end on, crimp it on, and then hook it up to the screw terminal. But at least, you know, this way, that whole rack of panels was already wired. I just hooked up one set of wires to it, and boom, we're done. So I... This was kind of funny because on a cloudy day, I'm like, oh, look, I've got nine amps of charge. This is great, right? Normally, I'd have about 15. I got a little bit less because the panels were laying down. Well, at the end of the day, when it was completely done, I had less amps because it was cloudy. So it was just like, what was the point, right? Okay. Um, my entire technology out here is based on digging holes in the sand, I think. So I don't... With the exception of the house, I don't hardly ever use concrete, right? I just dig a hole in the sand, drop the post in there. Oh, look out for the stickers too, by the way. Yeah, oh man, these are like inch long thorns right next to where I'm digging. But I'm like, well, if I can leave them, I try to, right? Okay, drop the post in the hole. Hey, that looks better. Just move the hole over a couple inches. Okay, uh, the phrase packing sand, I don't know if it works or not, but it does seem to set up pretty good. Uh, I've never had the panels blow over, so I guess that's good enough. All right, get this all filled back in and pack it in, and we're good to go. Okay, so the, what we're doing here is I'm just transferring the holes from the one set of panels to the next ones. And uh, this is important when you're standing on the end of the line. I want to get them all lined up so they look nice. And then once you get the holes lined up, when it's different seasons I can adjust the panels because the sun moves so in the summer they'll be almost flat and these are in the winter position they're pretty steep uh, drilling a hole getting them all hooked up again but by taking the time to get the holes lined up and then to level the panels then they all are at the same angle and they just look nicer uh, the first couple times I did this I wasn't careful enough when I set things up and every time I walked by it, I just cringed. It's like, oh, that looked just so awful. So, all right, now we get them standing up and uh, knock everything off. Oh, yeah, and the clamp is in the way, so just give that a good bump and it'll be fine. But yeah, look at the, the, the bushes. They're just flapping around. I'm actually wearing my Bluetooth headphones. I'm listening to, to music, but the wind is howling so much, it just it, it's intimidating. Right? So on days like that, I'm like, okay, just put on the headphones, rock out for a while. And if you don't hear the wind, it doesn't bother you so much. Yeah, I know. Weird, but it seems to work. Anyway, get that out of the stickers. And uh, now that we got the first set of holes in, re-level it again. And by doing it carefully now, the next time when I go to move them, I just have to drill holes for each new position. And then after that, every three months, I just hit the same holes again, and we're good. Bop it in, and look at that, they're nice and straight. The house, the bus, the shop, the panels are all aligned facing, well, from this position, we're looking due east. And at Equinox, the sun shines in the morning right down the panels and then you got there are all the panels are facing towards the south and so you get the maximum amount of sun all right we're still rocking out um i disconnected one of the wires on the opposite end so i don't have to worry about shorting everything out and then i'm just pushing these through i used uh, some scraps of pvc pipe and that kind of works like conduit and it's just to keep the wires from flapping around in the wind so much hook them back up again and we are good to go off camera, I went back and I added more loom and lots of electrical tape to tighten everything up. And any slack that was left over, I just pushed it back into the pipes. See, that looks really nice, right? Okay, and we're going to look and see how much power. Oh, remember we had 9 amps before? We only got 5 amps now. Look at that stupid uh, sun behind all the clouds. Ah! 
Okay, so, big old beautiful panels. Heavy, but not. Good, hey, we're good somewhere. So, step one. We're going to do these in series. Minus and positive should be able to connect together, right? And they do. So that's nice. Nice tight connection. Here's the first problem. I don't want to have to cut these off. So what I'm trying to get my head around, and I don't know if I can test this without cutting at least something off, which sucks. The Harbor Freight panels I've got hooked in parallel, so all of the positives connect into one, all the negatives connect into one. The voltage stays the same, the amps go up. For what that is, that seemed to work well. That way I didn't have to redo all my wiring. Okay. Since this is a new start, I'm like, okay, now I should be able to do it the right way. So, the the way that, you know, because these are set up with this style of connection, I should be able to just daisy chain them all together. So option one is to set this up so I have all four daisy chained together, and we can totally do that. Um, option two is what I'm kind of considering, is having two of them in series, and then this and this will go back as a positive and a negative to the charge controller. And if I do that, I'm going to cut these two off, but these ones I can leave on. Okay, so then I can cut these off and put something else on. Okay, that would, I mean, I bought these because it would be a nice, neat installation. I was like, I, I agonize over this kind of stuff. It's like, I, I really want to try to do things nice once in a while. All right. The other option is the way that I had done these on the other panels. This is going to be positive, and this is going to be a negative, right? So I could run these to a screw terminal that I've been using, okay? And then do the same on the next rack, have two parallel, or two series, and run a lead from that to the screw terminal, from this to that. And don't use any of these. Okay, so that's probably how it's going to be. I think end of the day I'm overthinking this and that would work and good enough, right? Because the wire on these, I mean these are massively thick insulators, but the actual wire isn't super big. That's the next question. Because I've got 12 gauge wire, usually I would try to do this with 10. But I don't have any more 10. 60 watts. VOC is, yeah, 91 point something volts. That's what I was thinking. These are closer to 100 volts. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. There's a bypass diode. Just series fuse, seven amps on the series fuse. Now, is there is that in here, or is that what I'm supposed to have? Don't know. Field wiring, stranded copper only, 14 gauge minimum, insulated for 90 degrees centigrade minimum. The racks are going to have the 2x4 on edge, so I can't drill through it. This is not a very big lip, I was hoping it was. It looks like these, because these were used, they were probably attached on the sides, but this is marked this side up. So my rack is going to go across the top and the bottom. Since there is these holes here, maybe I just add another piece to the bracket. Actually, they're almost the right size, too. Yeah, okay. So if I had these right up to each other, the 2x4 could span that nicely. For example, this is just a random bolt I found. Yeah, that would work. So 
So those are two and a half inch bolts, I think. Yeah, that's a two and a half. Okay, so I could do it that way. Because these are made to use with some kind of like a Z-bended bracket. So the bracket would mount and then it would come out and then you'd have a, a decent place to bolt to. You know, you're not supposed to bolt it directly from here. This would bolt to the bracket and then there's something else. So one thing at a time, right? I'll just cut that off. Because I wanted to be able to test one of these by itself. That should be enough. I'm trying to leave a long enough end. So if I decide to do something with this again later, I can. Okay. Now, as far as keeping track of which one is which. The connector itself is marked what it was, positive is this one, negative is this one. And I could just look on the back of the panel, it's marked positive and negative on that. So, okay. Now, what's this going to be like to screw? It's a big fat wire with a little tiny conductor. I don't think my strippers are going to work. So I'm going to try to take the black outer sheath out first. Let's strippers to take the inner sheath off. Almost worked. I will say this is a nice looking wire. I mean it was made for being outside long term. So I'm going to just put screw terminal lens on here. And these are the yellow ones, so that means that they're good for 10 to 12 wire gauge. Okay. And this was rated for 14 or bigger, so that's fine. So we're, we're actually not hurting ourselves too much by doing this, I guess. You know, that, that's a nice fancy waterproof connection. But this is rated for the same load. This is the way I'm trying to say it. Pop this off. Take one of the ends that I salvaged. Now I've got a bare end that'll match this one. I'll strip this end off, put a spade terminal on it, and then this is my negative. And I'll save this piece for later so I can use it to test different configurations. Okay, that's the plan. This connector is the minus one, so I'm going to just paint it black. Paint with a Sharpie. To keep these from getting jammed together. Connect this like that. That's a 10 gauge, so that's got a little higher capacity, that's good. So I'm going to screw that to the here, and now I have a red that I can keep an eye on. So from here, I can just easily connect into the battery box. So I was torn on, on like, you know, the best way to do this. Inside the battery box, when I, when I wired it up, one of the things I probably did right is I, I try to make it easy on myself for later. So a few of the connections that I'm making in there are to a screw terminal like this. So instead of hooking directly to the charge controller, I can plug this wire in to another set of screw terminals like this. So there's a wire from a terminal like this that goes to the charge controller and then wire from the panels that comes in and connects to it. So that makes it easier. So I got my black to the black and my red to the positive. And that's the positive and that's the positive. Okay, so we're good there. So now I've got, that's my black and my positive is taped off right now.
Anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned. This is turning out to be a pretty awesome year so far. With the land sold, I don't have to make land payments anymore. Everything is going to be okay. Bye for now.